What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys. Well, I, I wanted to talk. I mean, we're talking Splinterlands for sure. But one of the things that keeps coming up, especially in the Splinterlands Discord, and just all, from all the Splinterlands players that play both Golem Overlord and Splinterlands, is this. You know, the hype that's happening around. Uh, the the main token for golem which is part and people are saying like oh you know there should be th this kind of utility for sps this is exactly what they should have done look at look at how golem or look at how the the price for part or the value for part is staying super high there's a lot of volume it actually has more daily volume three times the daily volume of sps on high venture now high now sps is traded on other exchanges as well so it's not just all here and there's definitely whale games being played on binance and ethereum i'm sure but ultimately like you know you, you cannot deny the success of part and the tokenomics that uh, that go with it. Now, what the long term plan for that is, I, I don't know. Right. Uh, there's going to be so much more that has to be that has to be implemented to keep that kind of momentum for part. But the when you look at the tokenomics for, for both, there's one very, very fundamental difference. And that is uh, SPS is hard capped at three billion part is infinitely inflationary so there you know we can have millions billions of them and uh you know I, people may continue to burn it but ultimately there's there's gonna be there's gonna be a ton there's no hard cap on it now sps can you know through the governance uh print more if we want to in the future but i really really hope that the dow never votes to do something as stupid as that three billion is more than enough and if you want sps to go to the moon then we need to start burning through a lot of it so when I was looking at this and trying to think like, okay, well, how, how could you, like, what would it look like if you were to superimpose the utility that part has within Golem Overlord into something like Splinterlands? And I'm going to say something, and I think it's going to, you know, if this were to actually happen, people would be really upset, <laughs> I, th I think is uh, essentially what would happen. But the only parallel that I can draw is because golem and and for people in splinterlands who are not playing golem overlord don't worry you don't need to know all the details just know that you earn part and then you use part for everything that you want to upgrade so it's it's a it's a basic utility token for anything that you want to do in the game now when you think about splinterlands like dec should kind of be like that but let's for the for the sake of for the sake of argument let's just assume everything is done in sps right even though you can burn sps for dec and so therefore that parallel can still exist but Here's the main thing. It's just like, if that's your reward token and you want to advance further in the game in Splinterlands, right? So let's say you're earning SPS. That is the reward token. The, the only parallel that I can draw is imagine if you had to burn SPS or maybe DEC, that's fine. But if you had to burn SPS or DEC to level up your soul bound reward cards. If they implemented something like that, people would be running for the hills. They'd be screaming at the top of their lungs. But that is essentially what is happening in Golem Overlord, right? So like so much of what you earn is required to be burned, right? You're encouraged or even required to burn 75% in order to maintain uh, the right amount of emissions for you. So imagine with all the rewards that you get within Splinterlands, if you were then not just required to burn 75%, but you were burning it just to do things that we're already doing for free, right? It's just It just takes resource credits in order to... Uh, to level up your soulbound reward cards, that would be the that would be the main parallel. And I think if they were to do something like that, especially with where the game has been, you'd probably lose a bunch of you know a, a bunch of uh, other players, long term hardcore players, just because they're like, okay, well, it's it's not money that's going to the team, it's but it's going to the economy. But it's like, man, we're just getting taxed one after the other. Now, I'm not saying that it's a bad idea, right? Because we're seeing it be very successful in driving up the value of part. But I'm saying that with where it's been, with, with what uh, Splinterlands has traditionally done, um, if they were to implement something like that now, I think you'd lose a lot more folks. Now, it'd be interesting because if all of a sudden, like, you know, they implement that and, you know, we start burning crap tons of DEC and SPS shoots from, you know, two and a half cents to 25 cents, people would be like, whoa, <laughs> like maybe, maybe there's something to this. I don't know. Uh, but ultimately, I, you know, the tokenomics are just so different. And so when people make this argument that like, this is what SPS should have been, I feel like it's not taking into account so many other factors. Because keep in mind, I mean, Golem Overlord is cool, but right now it's very simple. Uh, hopefully in the future, it'll be much more complicated uh, and much more complex, but it's not anywhere near as complex of an ecosystem and, and uh, of a game as Splinterlands, a game economy 
economy more specifically, right? Because the game is whatever. But you you look at all of the other things that are happening within the Splinter Lens ecosystem and the fact that you can earn rewards that you have to buy cards to get in, right? You have to buy the spell book, right? And there's like a Goldmancer staff and a spell book. Those can be one to one. But then to play the game, you actually have to either buy or rent cards in order to just in order to operate within the game and to earn the rewards in the first place. So you know, it, 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 there's an interesting dynamic there where it's just like, okay, if the only thing that you're spending money on is the cards and then the cards hopefully retain their value over time and then you're getting rewards paid out to you in SPS, but you're required to burn a lot of those rewards in order to take the other rewards that you get, right, to level up in the game, uh, your soulbound reward cards. Uh, again, it's just, it's just apples and oranges in my opinion. But that doesn't mean that there can't be some interesting ideas taken from the tokenomics of one or the other and then applied to the next. But I'm going to save that for a future video. I just wanted to do a little bit of like a high level. This is these are the main differences. And so when you hear people, especially for, especially for the folks that aren't playing Golem Overlord, when when you hear people saying, oh, you know, this is exactly the type of tokenomics that that SPS should have done. I, I disagree because I think it's you know, there's there's not. It's just, it's just apples to oranges. It could be cool. It could be interesting. But if people feel like all of a sudden they have to burn even more of their rewards, which have already been shrunk down, right? The, the cards that used to have uh, immediate value no longer have immediate value. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting potions. You do get packs, which is cool. And that's kind of like, you know, an X factor different type of thing. But ultimately, it's just like if all of a sudden now the only monetary value you get regularly for playing the game, which would be SPS, uh, yeah, which would be SPS both from your battles as well as your chests, and you were required to burn a significant amount of that, or you were required to burn it in order to level up your soulbound reward cards. Again, I'm not saying it's a terrible idea, and and obviously you wouldn't be burning SPS; you'd be burning DEC with the way that the flywheel is set up. But it's it definitely makes for an interesting thought experiment of okay. Well, is there a sync there? I don't, I don't think that they could do it now because people would just be too frustrated. But would there be another potential sync that they could offer through Battle Pass, through whatever kind of innovative game modes they, are, they have in the future that could mimic something like what, uh, like what part uh, as, uh, is doing for, for Golem Overlord from a tokenomic perspective? I, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily see it, but I do wonder if maybe something like Tower Defense could do it or if there was another arcade-style game. I mean... I mean, here's the thing. Splinterlands could create an idle clicker similar to, to part and just start burning DEC with it. I, I I don't know. Like that's that's something that is. I mean, that's right there. Like the opportunity is there, right? And and maybe leveling up here will get you some some bonuses, right? Maybe it'll, e, here's the thing. Even if increasing, even if increasing your level in this idle clicker gives you just a slight benefit, maybe it adds a little bonus to your reward shares. I mean. I think we'd all be doing it or we'd all be exploring it. So there, there is an opportunity there. I don't know what it looks like, but um, you know, ultimately we'll see, we'll see how, how things end up playing out in the future. But that is all I have for you guys in this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.